In a store stocked with candy, soft drinks, and other low nutritious foods typically line the streets. Inner city families are continuously exposed to fast food restaurants and often do not have access or transportation to supermarkets that sell healthier foods. I have to say that I'm not like a big junk food eater, but it's just <coughs> fast food. Just, it, it don't necessarily have to be like a McDonald's or Wendy's, but like a pizza store or maybe a restaurant. Like I eat out at, yesterday I went to Olive Garden. So it's like I eat at different restaurants. I never eat at home. That's my problem. If you really wanted to have a growth business, you should buy a donut stand near an elementary school. Um, many of our kids go there, buy donuts, buy chips, buy hugs. Um, you know, do you know hugs? It's sugar and water and food coloring. Many times in the morning, the kids will come in, they're not feeling well for whatever reason. I'll say, what did you eat? Well, they've had a donut, they've had a hug. Many of them have chips and a hug for breakfast. The ones who come into me complaining they don't feel good, well, I guess I'm not surprised. But part of the problem is, is the shops in the area. When you go into a supermarket, the level that kids look, their eye level, it's all of the junk food, even in, in healthy food aisles, like, so, like all of the high sugar cereals, all the things that little kids want to grab, like they're at their eye level because we're, we're targeting them because you, we make money, money is made, you know, little kids in the store with their mom and dad and they want the sugar food they saw in the commercial and they're kind of forced to buy it. I think there are a range of reasons why childhood obesity has risen dramatically. Um, the types of products that they consume is just one element uh, of a growing, actually global problem. Mm -hmm. And as a company that makes soft drinks and, and makes uh, snacks in the form of confectionery products, we're, we're very conscious of the fact that we have a role to play in finding a solution and looking for new products, ways to um, address education around consumption of those products. Those are the things that we're focused on. A report from the Food Trust in Philadelphia states that the loss of supermarkets and other food retail in the city has affected the food economy and food choices for local residents. In Philadelphia, more than 277,000 adults consume fast food or take out three times or more per week. It is likely that many more children in the city follow a similar pattern. Once in a blue moon, my mother will cook, which is kind of abnormal because when I was younger, she would always cook like every single day. Like since I'm Latina, it's just like it was always like the culture food, and we always had like rice and beans and chicken or like some type of pork. But it was like it was cooked, like you know, it wasn't as unhealthy as if you go out. But now it's just like we order out every single day, and it's like not even once a week she'll cook. If you walk around here, you know, all you see is greasy spoons. And greasy food spoon is affordable. You know, but when it comes to actually going to the market and doing shopping yourself, it hinders women that are living alone at home for their children. And they have a number of children that they have to feed. I mean, no one wants to go to bed hungry. So mom is going to do what she has to do. But if we can just work out something, you know, with the neighborhood stores as far as the type of foods that they sell and for the price that they sell. Everything around here is a greasy spoon and it's cheap and it's easy to buy. The food that we eat here, as we said, is a processed food, okay? We have millions and millions of people to feed in this country. So in order to feed these people, uh, a, a mass amount of people, uh, again, they put these chemicals into the food. And by putting these chemicals into the food, the, the kids eat the, the food, you eat the food, and I eat some of it. I try not to eat all of it. And what happened to us that we sort of grow. And it depends on what you eat and how much you eat. Many schools across the country have begun the process of phasing out vending machines that sell junk foods and soft drinks with the hope of improving students' eating habits while in school. No soda machines here. Uh, they only have, uh, as I said, bottled water, flavored waters, uh, bottled juice. So that's, that's an improvement right there. I, I must say, they have like the low-fat candy and they have the um, uh, low-fat chips and stuff. Like you ever see those Doritos when they say baked Doritos or the shortbread? Stuff? They, the vending machines are pretty healthy. It's just the school store. But because corner stores and fast food chains are still widely available near urban public schools, teachers may need to take a more active role in motivating their kids to choose healthier food options. Modeling it. I should model, I should be an example of what they should do. 
uh, and I try to eat well. I try to encourage kids when I see them, you know, eating badly, what not to eat. I tell them what to eat. Uh, but keeping myself fit, uh, somebody who's in his late fifties, I, mean, I need to, you know, show them that they can they can have a healthy lifestyle. I think when we model appropriate eating, when kids have a choice, I, I think that they'll make the right choice. Um, if they see me eating a piece of fruit, Miss Hanlon, can I have some of your fruit? Miss Hanlon, what do you have there? Can I have some of that? So maybe even getting down in the lunchroom with them and letting them see what I'm eating and see some of the choices that I'm making. I think teachers in all administrative roles um, should promote positive eating habits. I know myself, I grew up actually as a healthy child, but going to college, I pretty much had the freedom to do whatever. And uh, unfortunately today, this is the result, but I know for myself, I'm becoming more aware of correct eating habits, you know, what eating more whole grains and cutting down on sugar, um, not drinking the soft drinks. Um, that's one thing I've tried this year to work on. So if, if my students see me doing that, maybe they might catch on to that trend. Exercise among American youth has dropped significantly over the years, contributing to increasing rates of overweight and obesity in many large cities. Less than 30% of all public and private high school students in the United States attend gym classes on a daily basis. The biggest challenge is financial. Um, a lot of kids tend to shy away from activities because they don't have the proper equipment, um, be it cleats or just basic helmets and shoulder pads. They don't want to get involved in those activities. That's why they lean towards playing in the street or going out and just playing freestyle football because they can't afford the actual equipment. It's mostly since of the since the occurrence of the fact that my mother didn't cook so much as she used to, I started to realize, you know, I had to be healthier with not just like food, but with like exercise and everything. So over like the past two years, I learned how to like train myself into like, like I'll watch health videos and figure out how to exercise where, you know, it won't hurt me, but it will still be effective. And I started to see a change and I'll start drinking water more. And it's just like now, like I play volleyball or I'll play football with my friends or something, and we just, like, it's a lot of exercise, and I know it's good. I, I cut grass, so usually I do at least two lawns, maybe um, a day sometimes, so a lot of pushing and a push up the hill, that's a whole lot of exercise, and I got to walk with the lawnmower and pull it and everything, so that's, that's just a whole lot of exercise right there, so I, I consider that as one of my exercises. I would have to say, like, um, I work, two jobs in school, so I have a very active day, so sometimes my energy level don't be up there to do exercise at the end of the night because when you wake up early in the morning, you um, go to school, you leave school, go to work, come home, you may have to do stuff with your parents, clean, do homework, study. I mean, at the end of your day, you're just like wiped out. And this, this, this is a park across the street from, actually from where I live, uh, they have this big football field I really don't use it every now and then if I go with my brother or something when he comes from college because he's really athletic and sometimes he jumps over me and says, come on, let's go run or something. But other than that, that's the only time that I go because I'm usually by myself. Budget cuts and physical education programs have left many kids without appropriate space and resources to get enough exercise while at school. As part of the No Child Left Behind Act, several states have mandated stronger testing scores among school students but have also eliminated physical education requirements for children. We've gotten away from certain things because of the academic increase, you know, the, the things that have increased academically, you know, that we want to focus on uh, getting past those state tests that the kids take every June or May, whatever the case may be. So we've kind of gotten away from some of the things that we should still be doing here. But that doesn't mean that we can't get it back. Um, the biggest challenge, one being in the inner city, is lack of funds and the resources. If there was a way that I could provide the means to which they could get the end result of all being fit.